money on a taxi. Personality-wise, he would have taken the train and saved his money for his computers. Um, it was on the 17th then that I think um, it, the first people to be alerted to what had happened were in fact the triplets, is this right? When they started getting texts saying, sorry about your brother, we're going to miss him, rip poor Breck. And did you come to learn then that in fact LD um, had gone online and told Breck's school friends a version of what had happened in his flat and essentially tried to pass off the murder as, as an accident? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think, was there also messages from LD online uh, saying that Breck had been violent towards LD, which was not true, and that Breck had in fact tried to commit suicide, which again was not true. So LD was basically covering up with cover stories, for want of a better phrase. He was trying to change his story. To, to change his to, account. And, you know, in the end, the, the boys that he told that it was some horrible accident, that stuck with those teenage boys because they could not believe that a friend of a friend would hurt, you know, another friend. They just, they couldn't grasp that their friend would hurt another friend. And it was the whole year of investigation. They held on to that in their, you know, in their sort of naive hearts. And they were shocked when, when LD changed his plea to guilty because they just didn't believe a friend. They, that's how strongly they believed in the friendship, that they didn't think a friend would hurt another friend. Even though they had never met, they just yeah. felt that bond. I think uh, Breck's dad became concerned and in fact angry because Breck hadn't come home on time when he said he would. And there was various efforts made by you and indeed Breck's dad to contact friends to try and locate Breck. Yes, I, mean, I got a text. That was how I was first alerted that there was anything wrong, that, yeah. that where was Breck, and that's when I started phoning his friends. And they kept sort of giving me the runaround because at that point, I think they already knew, but they didn't want to be the one to tell me. So just like any huge, you know, bullying story or violent story or happy, exciting story, it went viral amongst all of the gaming community, the school community, plus the siblings. And that was how the triplets found out. LD had, you know, a big range of children that he was interacting with. And so all of, all of the children knew that Breck was dead before any police parent or grown up. I think, in fact, as you said in your statement, you demand to know from one of Breck's school friends where he was, and eventually they told you that he was with LD. And my heart sank. Yeah. Um, we know, because you just mentioned it, that in due course, it wasn't until the 12th of January 2015 that Breck was before the Chelmsford Crown Court, and he pleaded guilty. Sorry, I said Breck. Lewis was before the Chelmsford Crown Court, pleaded oh. guilty and he was sentenced to life with a minimum term of 25 years imprisonment. I think you were present at those proceedings and indeed spoke to the court um, in what's called a victim personal statement, setting out everything that you had knew about Lewis and indeed, perhaps more importantly, everything you knew and wanted to say about Breck that day. Um, can I move on from... Uh, that court appearance and LD pleading guilty to what has happened uh, with you and to you um, since uh, Mr. Danes has been sentenced to that term of imprisonment. Yes. Um, um, I want to just ask you, please, but there about... Was something sorry. else about that same time frame, if we should cover it at the same time. We found out that LD was regularly sending photos of Syrian beheadings to some of the gamers, and no one ever reported that. And that goes back to my knowledge now of how, you know, helpful SEOP could have been, or, you know, to, to actually follow up on some of these yeah. reports had they been made. But children and teenagers and parents didn't know where to report or what to do. So in the end, he was very interested in Syrian beheadings and did wanted to do a copycat. But nobody had reported that he had these unusual and dangerous interests. And it's the same with, you know, when I speak to children, it's, if they're getting pornography or anything that's uncomfortable, that it needs reporting and acting on. Because if they don't, it, the, the perpetrator will go from child to child to child until they find one that reacts the way they want them to. And none of those boys thought to do anything about it. They all joked that LD was a pedo. Well, because, I was just going to ask, oh, you, yes, no, just going to ask you about that. Uh, so. The boys that were in the gaming, um, online gaming uh, group 
joked that LD was a pedo. But did anyone do or say anything about that? I don't think they knew what to do. They hadn't had proper sort of e-safety lessons that talked about grooming and the click see out button and, and how to report. And as I said, they, they, they would have thought they were too cool, too cool and too old to call Childline. Childline now has, you know, better, uh, I think, more age-appropriate marketing posters that I've seen that appeal to teenagers as well, and that's so important. But they didn't have, I don't think they were available at that time, so the boys didn't think to call there. They all said they thought somebody else's parents knew, but uh, the parents that did know just kind of brushed it off and said, Lawrence, Rex's mom already knows she's called the police. So everyone sort of took a step back uh, rather than gathering more information that I could have rung the police back and given more because those boys had more stories about him saying he was a freedom fighter, talking about his gay boyfriend who committed suicide right in front of him. I mean, he had a lot of really scary topics that he discussed with them and they didn't open up and talk to their parents or report it anywhere. And I think that's so important that that the young people and parents know where to go to report these things. And when I speak in my presentations and I say, how many of you have heard of SEOP? It's usually five out of a room of 50. And I'm like, get your tattoo gun out and, and, and tattoo it on your arm because you may need this number someday. And they, they haven't heard about it. And it's, it's not because it's not a good service. It's because people just didn't get enough knowledge and education about it. I forgot what the question was. No, 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 not, not at all, because I was going to come on to deal with um, events after um, Danes has pleaded guilty, and you spoke about the lack of potential knowledge that is out there about the click see -op button as one example of a, as a reporting mechanism. I did also want to ask you about um, the IPCC investigation that followed, um, and in particular some aspects of the report, uh, not all of it, um, Miss Lefebvre, but I just want to um, put it into context by having a look at the investigation, which can I call up again please, INQ 001032, and page 6 of 27. If I said in my opening it was an HMIC report, can I um, correct that? It is the Independent Police Claim Complaints Commission investigation into Surrey Police's handling of the call. And just so that we can put it into context, if we have a look at paragraphs 23 and 24, following your call to um, the operator, a uh, log was created that evening and the log is um, set out there, effectively summarising or paraphrasing, for want of a better word, um, what the operator has noted down about your call. And it says that informants concerned her son is being groomed, has been hanging around with Lewis, last names, Danes or Haswari, he's 18, runs a server, and then she summarises some of the things that you had told her and summarises some of the information that you had told her. It says later on, the informant doesn't know what Lewis's phone number is. There's some clarification. I've advised informant she's done the right thing to take the computer away and to stop her son having contact with Lewis. If an informant speaks to Lewis again, advised her to tell him not to contact her son anymore. And they've done an intelligence check with above names of Lewis, and from Twitter, no picture but linked to a Minecraft gaming website which they couldn't access. And then cancelled a request from the agency police, NFA, which stands for no further action. The log was closed, stating nothing to suggest this is grooming. And you were not informed that the call was closed or that no further action would be taken in regards to the concerns that you had raised during that call. I needed to know nothing was being done. I needed to be told we're doing nothing. I thought something was being done. And a point about the confiscation, you know, when they said take away the computer and I said I was going to, that just made it go underground. That's not the answer. And um, when I told them I couldn't, uh, we couldn't find photos, and although I don't see in the transcript, I couldn't find a photo of him. When they say in there they couldn't find a photo, that should have brought up huge police curiosity because a teenager with no photos online, that's our dream, isn't it? Because they 